What's up? Hey, this past year I joined TikTok and I'm not gonna lie, it's been my guilty pleasure at night scrolling through, so much fun. Haven't quite figured out where I fit in yet, if I'm gonna be a weightlifter, a runner, a lip sync, or dancer, or just a silent viewer. But one thing has become clear is that we need to talk. I've been on the fitness side of social media for a bit and something I've noticed is that there seems to be a resurgence, a second wave of many of the trends that hit Instagram, Pinterest, even Tumblr like many moons ago. And as much as we've been myth busting, educating and talking, those same trends have a pesky habit of repeating. So we are bringing back the myth busting series. We are talking about what's trending. We are breaking down what is actually worth your energy on this fitness journey. Today, we're gonna be kicking off talking about ab workouts, squat form, starting or continuing some controversy around and lifting heavy. But before we get into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic for partnering with me on today's video. The Seed Daily Symbiotic is a two-in-one prebiotic and probiotic. And of the trends I've seen on TikTok, I am so glad that gut health is getting the hype it deserves because your gut is connected to literally everything in your body. It affects everything from digestion to metabolism to immune function and the list goes on. The reason I recommend Seed is because it is one of the easiest things you can do to level up your daily routine. It's just two capsules, first thing in the morning. Seed Science Backed Blend is specifically formulated to help support gastrointestinal function. So think keeping you moving, reducing bloating, relieving constipation. It also supports gut barrier integrity. So keeping what belongs outside of your gut, out what belongs inside of your gut, in, which can help reduce additional stress on your body, reduce inflammation, things that should be a priority if you are training at a high intensity, if you wanna get the most out of your fitness journey. It's also got benefits for cardiovascular health, immune function, and the list goes on. So if you wanna check out Seed for yourself, I will put a link down below, plus a code to save 15% off your first month's supply. All right, otherwise, on with the video. Stop doing crunches for ABS. Stop doing crunches and do this instead, where this involves marketing is walking, core stability, and functional exercises. So I kind of love this trend. And I love this trend because there are so many misconceptions about training core. The main one being that if you want to get abs, you should do a bunch of ab exercises, which depending on the exercise, yes, will probably help develop your core. But what most people mean when they say get abs is get visible abs. So what I love about this trend is that they're flipping the script of typical core training. Instead of focusing on the appearance of your midsection, they're focusing on the everyday benefits of having a strong core. They're focusing on strength, stability, ability, the less sexy but very necessary side of core training. And a mistake that many weightlifters, myself included up until recently make, is developing all the muscles around your core without building that foundation of core coordination and control. If you think of each exercise like crossing a bridge, you start the exercise at one end of the bridge. You lift the weight. Once you've lifted the weight all the way up, you're now at the other end of the bridge. Now, in order to complete the range of motion, you have to then lower the weight to return to your starting position. Your core is the bridge. In order to get from point A to point B as safely and efficiently as possible, which bridge would you you choose, the concrete bridge or the sketchy wooden bridge that's wobbling all over the place. If your bridge core is not stable, you risk not being able to get from point A to point B or getting an injury while trying. Comparing functional training to traditional crunches, some of the key differences would be that many of the functional training exercises you see are done from an upright or standing position, which makes enough sense because I would argue most of us spend most of our time upright as compared to laying on the ground. They're also moving in multiple planes of motion. I love this because we are not trains. We are not fixed on a track with our movement. We exist in 3D. So if you're looking to train more functionally, these exercises could be a great starting point to be honest with what I've shown so far in this video, you'd probably be just as well off doing heavy compound lifts, standing overhead press, front squats, heavy deadlifts, etc. You're building that same bracing strength. We told her squeezing her glutes in a squat doesn't do anything for her booty. The squat has so much controversy. And for what? If you want to squat, squat. If you don't want to squat, don't squat. If you want to build a booty, here's the T. Squats challenge your glutes differently as compared to deadlifts or hip thrusts or any other 
other exercise. There is no one best exercise. Variety is the spice of life. And so squats, deadlifts, hip thrusts, they should probably all be part of your routine. The situation with the video in question seems to be how to feel your glutes on the squat. And they are suggesting that in order to feel your glutes on the squat, you should not be squeezing them. Before we get into this, I found a great video from another woman. She literally took the words out of my mouth, explained what I was gonna explain anyway. So we're gonna play that. Stop squeezing your glutes at the top of your squat, ladies. If you don't feel your squat in your butt and you definitely feel it in your quads, you're not squatting correctly. This is what your squat probably looks like. Quarter way down and a big squeeze at the top. What we are aiming for instead is a full range of motion stretch. That's where your butt grows in the lengthened portion, which means you must break parallel. Squeeze your butt to stand at the bottom of the squat. And remember, big booties are built in the bucket. She's not saying to not squeeze your glutes. She says, don't squeeze your glutes at the top of the squat because by the time you're standing, their work is done. Because of the length tension relationships of the different muscles that contribute to the squat movement, when you are at the bottom of that range, your glutes are at a mechanical advantage to contribute most relative to the other muscle groups. So that is where you should be squeezing, at the bottom of the squat. If you are struggling to feel your glutes on the squat, squat deeper. If you can't squat deeper, work on your ankle mobility, your knee stability, your core strength. Do what you gotta do. But it is not the squat's fault that you are not feeling your glutes. It just might mean you have some troubleshooting to do. As for the second half of this video, I am so happy that this girl has found what works for her. I will always encourage you to find what works best for you and your body, commenting just specifically on the exercise shown here. This is still a compound exercise. It's not an isolation exercise. So you can't actually isolate one muscle in a compound exercise. That's just the opposite of the of the definition of a compound exercise. As for these bands she's got around her thighs, it looks like they're trying to do some form of blood flow restriction training, which there is some science behind it. In the way they're using it here, though, it's probably not doing much more than just kind of squeezing your thighs and make your bum look good, which her bum looks great. So I understood the assignment. <laughs> I understood the assignment. The comment section on that video is one of the most toxic things I have seen. My heart goes out to that girl because she went to battle. She doubled down. She kept her chin up. She kept showing up. There's a lot to unpack here. So breaking it down. Can you get lean without lifting heavy? Yes. The lean and toned look comes down to muscle and having a low enough body fat to see that muscle. Everybody has muscle. For example, Victoria's Secret models, love them or hate them, that's not the conversation here. Most of them are doing cardio, kickboxing, Pilates, bar, low intensity or low impact workouts of one form or another. Most of them are not doing super, super heavy, like powerlifting style weightlifting. They don't have a ton of muscle, but because they have low levels of body fat, they still look lean and toned. There are many videos countering this either directly or indirectly. Many of them come from men who kind of jokingly say, you know, it's impossible for women to get too big, to build too much muscle and get bulky. And while I definitely definitely agree. It's very hard for women to build muscle. It's a very slow process. I would say from personal experience as someone who did reach a point in my fitness journey where I did not want to keep building muscle, basic thinking, if you have two people, same amount of body fat, one person has less muscle, one person has more muscle. Naturally, the person with more muscle is going to have more body in certain areas of their body. And different people are allowed to have different preferences for the size and shape of their body to invalidate those feelings because of your own beliefs. Like, okay, this comment, yes, 100%, yes. I am so sick of fitness influencers acting like there's one way. Like, there's not one way. If you like lifting, you should lift. And if that works for your body, perfect. But that doesn't mean it works for everyone. That doesn't mean that's like, the one solution for everyone. I've been on both sides of this, so I understand what it's like to only do cardio and not know how to lift. I understand what it's like to be all into lifting and want the big ass and want the curves and all that, which is fine for people, but that I, I had to ask myself, why do I want all that? Why do I want a huge ass? Because everyone else wants one. I found myself being sexualized so much more when I was lifting heavy. And I just don't care for that. Any, I thought I was the only person who felt this way. I did not know that there was anyone else who had had this experience. And now I realize there's probably a lot of people who feel this way, but I've started talking more openly on Instagram about why I stopped with doing all the booty workouts and posting like booty pics and obsessing over booty everything. And I don't have the perfectly articulate explanation for 
how this came about, but I feel like this past year, I woke up from a weird dream and I'm finally living in my body for me. And it's mind blowing. How many people do not want you to be happy in your body? I'm not even gonna say it's a double standard. It is 3D chess at this point, which really just highlights, it was never about your body. It was about other people's insecurities. And that's what feeds the ever-changing standards in this industry, because speaking truthfully, in the fitness industry, it's not lucrative on social media. It's not entertaining to be happy maintaining your body. And that is the tea. Mm, that is it for today's video. I always get so hype when I'm filming these. And then as soon as I'm done, I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done? But honestly, I do get nervous sharing videos like this, where we are specifically featuring other creators, other real Real life human beings who have a life behind the screen because while I try to live without regret, there was a series I did similar to this. It was myth busting, kind of breaking down trends, things like that. I wanted it to be very educational, very factual, but in this series, it's private now, don't go looking for it. I featured some pretty big fitness creators and I got so caught up in being right that I lost the plot of what I feel we should be trying to achieve as a fitness community. I stand by the facts I shared, but my delivery was completely off. I was naive, that's on me, but it was stupid thinking I could speak the way I did without hurting somebody's feelings. And that's part of why I haven't done a series like this in a bit. There are entire channels on here built on the basis of putting other people down, using their names for views, and then just tearing into them. And to be honest, like, if you're one of those people, I, I really doubt that that's like in my viewership right now, but if you're one of those people who has one of those accounts or you support people who have accounts like that where they're just tearing people down, common with the negativity, as much as they might be making those videos under the guise of being educational or of protecting people from bad information, at least have the self-awareness to realize that the people in your comment section are less concerned with facts and are more there for the pile on. They're there because they want to spread negativity I do not claim that energy. I do not want that for our community here. That is not what I want this series to turn into. I want to prop people up where we can. I want to cheer people on. I want to celebrate what people are getting right. I want to get spicy, but not in a way that's going to hurt other people's feelings. There's a lot we can talk about, but we can do it kindly and we can do it politely. So if you have any trends that you'd like me to review, either comment them down below or DM me on Instagram. That's it for now. If you want to check out the seed two in one prebiotic and probiotic I mentioned at the start, gut health has got the hype. It deserves the hype. I'll put that link down below as well as the code to see 15% off your first month's supply. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.